in summer speed the most trouble was obviously Trick and except for Trick I think it was trashy because he was like the kind of smart player but he was very predictable but he still was very strong mechanical player so every time against him it was some kind of trouble otherwise I don't think there was like such a strong jungler May sometimes Spirit has that good showing but mainly on Nidalee Well, I think Spirit just didn't match the fanatic expe expectations. I think Reynover was more of a carry player. More, I mean, Reynover was playing for the team and he was a shot caller. And I think Spirit plays more for himself and he's the carry jungler. And I think Fnatic has too many carry players for it to work. And that's why it didn't work in, in the summer split, after, especially after Daylor left. I think there is not much I can say about it. I'm just very creative in game and every time I play early game I look for advantage and I don't want to just farm and I don't pick champions that can just farm. So I'm always trying to make my laners ahead by giving them kills or by taking kills uh, on my own. And I'm also really good at exploiting opponents' weaknesses in wards or vision or, or jungle power or whatever in the early game. So I'm very proud of myself doing it and I think I'm capable of doing it pretty much every game. I think we couldn't make it simply because we beat ourselves. I don't think it was Yamato coaching. I mean, okay, so Yamato made splays really strong and they had really, really good idea of 1 3 1 and 1 4, and their pick and ban was really good too. So, yes, Yamato had like big uh, performance in the, in the whole thing, but I think probably could match it. It was more on us as the players that just didn't look for enough mistakes from splice part that were there. And it was more on us that we just beat ourselves in the fourth, fifth game where we collapsed and we just didn't try enough and we were a bit scared and maybe panicked a little bit in picks and bans or everything could be better. I think this World Finals we played much better than we did in the playoffs. I think I'll play the second one. I think. Um, it's better to be the underdog and it's better to when people don't expect much from you because then you can actually prove them wrong and it like drives you towards the goal and drives you to victory and when you are you know the best team and everyone expects so much from you and then you drop out of the in-group stage even you though we had a hard group let's take example of TSM where they were probably the best Western team coming into the tournament or everyone expected them to be the best Western team. And then I can understand the lose to Samsung because Samsung was a really great team. They went 1-1 with, but Samsung was playing with a sub. And then, you know, they, they lost 0-2 to RNG. So I, I think, you know, it, it's better to be the underdog that no one roots for and then everyone's very surprised. I think I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't make it to finals. I really wanted to play uh, on the big stage in Krakow as the first second place match instead of being only third fourth. I would, you know, make a big gift for my Polish fans and it would be glorious for me to play in front of them on, on us, you know, in the finals. But I'm, I'm still kind of happy I went to Krakow to Tauron Arena, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> I think the biggest thing on Korean Bootcamp is that I played against the best players in the world and there was nothing that could impress me when it comes to their idea of playing the game. But the biggest thing that compared to Europe, no one ever gave up and no one ever was trolling. So even if the game was very, very tough, everyone was trying to farm, play safe and wait for late game instead of running around and you know dying for no reason. So I think the idea of playing the game in Korea and the attitude is way, way better than in Europe and it makes practice so much more efficient. I mean, if I could play in LCK, I'll probably give it a shot because you'll play against the best players in the world and you would, like, I would learn so much there, it would be like amazing. But on the other hand, it's so much different um, culture. It would be so, so much, like coach is pretty much everything and you have very strict rules how to live. But I would give it a shot. I actually don't know what team though. I think maybe Samsung. 
I think I could bring more aggression to their team, even though I think Ambition plays really well. But I mean, I, I don't have a lot of ideas. And uh, I think overall, any LCK team that you know mains for the aggression and for playing as the first team, not, not like the passive style. Okay, so I think there are so many of them, I can name one, but it will be women and it will be food and it will be soul and everything, I guess. <laughs> I think the funniest game I've ever had was against Rocks Tigers because I think I learned so much from Peanut and I think, you know, we are very similar, I think, when it comes to play style, I'm very aggressive too. And it was really nice to play against such an aggressive jungler and such a talented one. And he was playing so well every scrim and uh, I could match him. So I was very glad of my skill and I was actually very happy with, with our scrims against them. I think it was kind of a secret weapon. I think my synergy with Odon was always really good. It's just that we didn't, we, we couldn't show it a lot because a lot we were playing around bot side or mid side. But I think with every lane, I think the least synergy we had actually bot side. I think uh, we had very good synergy mid lane with Ryu. Pretty much we would outperform any duo mid lane uh, in European LCS, I believe. Maybe except for Trick and Perks because they're really good too, but they just didn't show up on Worlds. And the top lane, our synergy was sick, I think. I think it was mainly that it was first time on stage in week one, so we were a bit scared and we didn't play our game that we did on bootcamp. And in week two, we just kind of played our game. We were more relaxed and chill and everyone tried way, way more and everyone played way, way better. So I think that's the point. We were also, in the first week, we were like sick and we were jet lagged. And in the second week, everything was gone. So. Okay, so. For Jankos the player, it means that I'm very glad that we came top four. I'm kind of disappointed that we couldn't win at least one game versus Samsung because I wanted to show the people that we you know, belong here instead of getting swiped trio. I still think we had better games than Cloud9 did, so I'm happy about that. Um, as a person, I think it's very, you know, it, it's success and playing in Madison Square Garden was an amazing experience and traveling around the world. You know, I, I actually, in, in one month, I, I just went the whole around the world, around the globe, you know, from Poland to, to Korea, to Seoul, to USA, and, and then again to, you know, to, to, to Poland. So it's, it's pretty amazing, it's pretty sick. It was, it was a really nice journey and I'm so proud of it and I'm so happy. Hopefully it will happen next year too. I wouldn't say one of the best EU jungles of all time because I don't know what does that even mean. I think I'll consider myself one of the top European junglers at the moment and I think that I'm happy with my performance but I don't want to stop at that. I want to keep improving and keep being better and try to match the Korean junglers and think about it more, you know, than, than just being like European top jungler. I think uh, it would be getting more idea how to play mid game maybe. I felt like in, in the mid game against Samsung, they were so, such a smart team. There was nothing that could help us. We would, we would need another like two, three weeks of preparation because they were in completely different level. So if I, if I could change one thing, that, but it would be a big thing, I, I would change the whole infrastructure, how the screens in Europe work because the difference between scrims in, in, in bootcamp, in, in World Finals, I, you know, to the ones in Europe is, is so different, it's so huge. Basically, everyone is trying and everyone is playing his comp and everyone is trying to learn instead of to win compared to Europe. In Europe, it's basically you just want to win the scrim, but you don't try to always play the comp. And even if you do, your opponent doesn't, so then the scrims turn into a clown fiesta. And it's very, very bad for us and it hurts our practice time and it's, it's terrible. And I think in NA, the money is the problem. I think NA players, they don't ha try hard so much because they have so much money that it doesn't really matter for them. The players are on World Finals or they don't even need to like show themselves because they'll just come back to streaming and make so much more. So I think the infrastructure is kind of bad. I think Korea is like very, very hard on you, but very promising as well. And they, 
че са от перформанс. I don't have anything in mind. I really hope I can go with friends to mountains and maybe like, you know, I, I wanted to like see a lot of snow and, and maybe like try some snow sports or like have some fun, you know. Otherwise, I'll play stream and, and just chill, relax, you know. We, I don't have a lot of time. I have only two months in uh, next split and I'm kind of empty right now because there is nothing else I can do. You know, I, I know only playing league, so I'll just play some solo queue and, and wait peacefully and try to collect my, collect my thoughts um, for next spring split.